Screwball82 with another video that's not a film review. Um, the government has performed uh, an unprecedented, if not altogether, it's, it's not a big surprise, but it's a U-turn. There was going to be a scrapping of the law that would have seen vending machines for cigarettes and um, shop displays uh, taken away this year. Um, but it looks like that now that's going to be brought in after all, or there's a move to bring it in, April next year, so that all the large <coughs> stores can will have to, you know, remove them. Um, and then the same rule will follow for small shops, uh, corner shops and the like, three years later. I would assume that the, um, the decision to stagger that is by way of a gesture, um, acknowledging the probable loss of around £250 million pounds, uh, to news agents and, and corner shops. Um, I'm sure that they are very grateful for the reprieve, just as the pub managers were grateful when the ban was brought in a couple of years ago. The ban itself was a decision that pulverised um, many a pub, uh, particularly the local, the local, you know, round the corner, uh, with over one thousand closed. I'm not just pulling that figure from the sky. You can you can look that up yourself. The greatest side effect of the legislation was uh, the inevitable rise of the, uh, you know, the the pub come restaurant type thing. Um, or the wine, the trendy wine bar, which is fine if you like wine, um, which whilst cheap and cheerful um, are generally fairly vacuous places which only ever really serve as meeting points before moving on to do something more interesting anyway. The local pub with the great jukebox and the good ale and uh, the darts and the pool, <coughs> the live music, uh, the cosy atmosphere is dying, it's still dying. It's a casualty of Labour's lack of foresight. Uh, they provided absolutely no choice to the licensee, no vote, no alternative. Uh, you stop smoking in your pub and then, you know, you stand back and watch it crumble. Uh, if you don't believe that's happening, then uh, look at the local pubs around you compared to, say, a decade ago. Um, look at how busy they are. Despite the fact that there exist such things as extraction systems, um, the manufacturers of which are losing out, um, and despite the fact that there could have been an option for you know designated smoking areas, um, and despite the fact that other countries have actually proved you know they, they've proved that you know it's completely effective, um, the government still considered uh, a straight out ban to be better for everyone's health and and better well-being, and uh, we're expected to believe that it had nothing to do with the financial requirements that the above listed would, you know, would, would need. How stopping smoking inside pubs and clubs completely and utterly is a good idea is somewhat beyond me, um, because it does mean that the older generation, uh, otherwise good paying loyal customers, um, you know, stop going out and spending money. Um, they prefer instead to stay home with friends and have a good time you know, drinking and smoking as they want to, um, not spending money, which surely in a time of economic downturn is, is a bad idea. Now, one might think that that's no big deal. Um, people still have the freedom to head outside and have their cigarette if they want, which they can do together. And if they are the only smoker in a group, then, uh, you know, they may be able to head out with a friend who's happy to give up five minutes time to, to keep them company. Um, as for what about in the freezing winter, uh, then they can wait for their cigarette, you know, if they're that desperate for a fix. As after all, it's not fair to ask a non-smoker um, to uh, endure the second-hand smoke of a, you know, when they don't want to be enduring it. And that is a fair argument, but a couple of points. The fact that second-hand smoke is significantly damaging to a human being in today's world is a fact that I'm deeply suspicious of. Um, I've got an amusing image of an obese guy um, outside some Weatherspoons on a hot day in London, you know, on his lunch break, some white collar worker, um, and he's drinking his pint of lager. 
and uh, you know, surrounded by the smog of the tra- the city traffic and the uh, the asphalt thrown into the air by the ever changing you know city architecture, and he's asking the person sat across from him if they wouldn't mind putting their cigarette out because uh, secondhand smoke is bad for him. Um, let's say you don't agree that secondhand smoke is a physical issue and it's just something that you don't like, it smells bad and you don't want it on your clothes, you know. I say grow up um, and stop being a baby. You know, for years and years and years, smokers and non-smokers have commuted, um, commuted, sorry, communed um, happily together and until somebody started raging on about how awful smoking is, I don't think anybody ever really gave that much of a shit. You know, you have the right not to smoke, but that doesn't negate the smoker's privilege to have their drug, just as it doesn't negate the drinker's privilege to have their drug. Um, Personally, I don't disagree that there are situations where smoking should be illegal, um, where food is prepared and eaten, enclosed spaces for public performance, cinema, theatres, and in your car. It can be off-putting, it can be distracting, it can be unsafe. Um, so, you know, I'm not somebody going out there all sort of, you know, everyone should be able to smoke everywhere all the time. You know, I'm not one of these, I'm just trying to be sensible about it. And that's the point. I think people are throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Um, if something bothers you that much, then just learn to wash your clothes, you know, or vet people before committing to a friendship with them. Or do what what people have done ever since, you know, man has been able to think and get over it. You know, but anyway, we begrudgingly bow uh, to this ruling, and even the smokers just now get on with it. You know, but now we've had this proposal <clears throat> of banning shop displays, vending machines, and uh, even a move to make packaging plain and uninteresting. So I'm just going to break that down. Vending machines, I don't disagree with. Um, they do give easy access to young people, and if, as the, um, the health minister has said, you know, one of the drives for this decision is to get the message through to you know to, to to be sort of out of sight out of mind for young people and at least not give them such easy access i understand that and i've got no real issue with that i suppose but phasing yeah as for phasing out the 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 shop displays for the same reason um have we not heard of id you know shall we phase out all movies and games that aren't you know, more that are more than a PG certificate. You know, shall we remove alcohol from all the shelves just because we can't be bothered to enforce the control that governing bodies and the actual employee employers give us? You know, to use to to enforce. Young people see smokers smoking, and uh, quite often it's their parents, or it's in films or TV until that becomes illegal. Um, it's no surprise people smoke. Um, that doesn't automatically encourage pe- young people to want to smoke. It's not an ambition. Um, in most cases, it's an experiment. It's part of growing up. It's testing the water. Um, you know, in most cases, it's just a phase. Um, all of that aside, you know, how about good parenting and good education? Or are we not going to rely on that anymore either? As for any other reason that we're phasing out displays, uh, the people who want the product will still know it's there. Um, this is not out of sight, out of mind for them. You know, an addict is an addict, and regardless of whether you have it on show or not, they're still going to buy it. I'd like to look at the other point, which is the packaging. If removing ad- adverts from TV, um, providing helplines for people who want to stop, you know, boldly printing smoking kills on the packets alongside black lungs isn't stopping people smoking, what the fuck is plain packaging going to do. Exactly. I'm really curious. You know, we know the risks. They're made very clear. A smoker is not a moron. Um, What they are is an adult who should be entrusted to make a decision based on the information provided. You know, they should be offered help if they want to stop. Um, Perhaps they're working on the logic that, you know, a bit like the green ketchup didn't sell. You know, it looked different. So maybe, maybe it won't sell as well. Green ketchup looked disgusting. That's why it didn't sell. People kept buying the red ketchup. And my point with that is, it's not what it looks like. People want what's inside. If they know that they enjoy what's inside, they're still going to get it. Um, I would have had more respect for all of this if they were to just come out and be honest. If they just said, you know, there you go, we smoking's bad for everyone, just stop. It's bad. Smoking's illegal. Okay, 
lots of people wouldn't have been happy but at least the soundbite that it's for our general health and our well-being would have been a believable one um, as it stands we just recognize it as hypocrisy how can we take seriously the claim that it's for our health and our well-being when McDonald's is on every corner spending money on junk food is encouraged on TV and radio okay and alcohol is still our friend um, the fact is that tobacco provides too much for the coffers um, and why remove such a terrific money horse you know um, the fact that Mr Cameron told the publican back in 2008 um, I don't like the smoking ban I'm just not a banner it, it you know it just makes it worse so this is really just the second step in a rather badly disguised move to ultimately make smokers the bad guy to make smoking an awful you know immoral act uh, and you know with anyone who partakes in it as somebody you know to be someone who you do not want to associate with if one does not believe this then just check out the uh, you know the manipulative NHS adverts that uh, guilt trip smokers um, apparently smoking is now a strain on the NHS and uh, I like the way that certain other issues it's a whole other subject but you know they're not being addressed and what I like is you know the NHS moaning it's a moan that the NHS have to treat people who are ill you know shock horror um, if someone is sick someone is sick and they're entitled to the help and until it is proven that smoking caused the illness that that patient is suffering without shadow of a doubt okay that day when that happens those patients will probably be more than happy more than happy to pay for their treatment because ultimately at the end of the day they're still sick but that won't happen because it's always refutable um, the point about something being proven is that there is no exception to the rule and how do we how do we uh, deal with these thousands of people who live perfectly fine happy eventful lives albeit perhaps not completely healthy you know smoking 20 a day well the answer to that seems to be we ignore that bit if you want further evidence that this is just a ploy um, you know and it's evidence of the most damning kind then you can check out health uh, health secretary Andrew Lansley's quote as saying that he these moves are um, let me just check hang on don't want to miss I, I don't like the idea of misquoting someone moves to change social attitudes towards smoking and the sad part is it seems to be happening there does seem to be a slight shift in the view of smoking you know to the extent that it's turning up in questionnaires not questionnaires in uh, census and in uh, on some job applications alongside other things that don't matter like your sexual orientation and your religion if you don't want to associate with a smoker then that's your right it's your choice I must say that I think you're probably you know you're probably passing up some good friendships you know if you're gonna base such decisions on such flimsy on, fl on, on something so flimsy um, I'm saying all this as a non-smoker as someone who is not interested in smoking but also as someone who believes in a free society um, I believe in a society where people have the right to do as they please and without being singled out, outlawed and embarrassed um, I think what's got my goat about all this is the barefaced lie of it all um, it gets right under my skin and in a country where violent crime is high uh, police numbers are low and may be reduced um, immigration is, is an unaddressed issue spread of sexual disease teenage pregnancy in a country whose international news you know bring home stories of a dictator openly killing his own people um, the fact that we're focusing our resources on something so pathetic is pretty pathetic so I urge anyone who feels the same who agrees with any of the points about this um, to do your research write to your MP write to the health secretary you know write to Cameron um, you know make it clear that whilst we enjoy his writings we are not happy with George Orwell being a prophet thanks for listening